Now let's talk about some ideas to help you get going with Valgender Sikon's Intervals and Angles. Now I asked Valgender to write a piece for this book that used a lot of independent roles. And what he came up with is a piece that's going to use every single interval in both hands, played at a number of different contortions and angles of the body, all in one piece. So you want to make sure that before jumping into this one that you've practiced your independent roles outside of the piece at a number of different intervals and a lot of different dynamic markings. Remember that independent roll is initiated as a pure rotation of the arm that's going to create the roll between the two mallets. Remember that you want to have control both dynamically and rhythmically. You don't want one, you don't want the space between the mallets changing. You want to have a nice consistent sound, just like you'd be rolling with two mallets in each hand, or one mallet in each hand, excuse me. You don't want to have them 
oblong or anything. Now within this piece, you're going to be required to do an independent roll on a single note. And here's the way that I suggest doing that. The smaller the interval, the more energy you're going to have to expend playing the independent roll. Octaves are usually a little bit easier than, you know, say, major seconds. So what you're going to do if you have to play a roll on a single note is that you're going to place one mallet, depending on the angle of your body, it could be either the inside or the outside mallet, off center of the bar, meaning not directly over the resonator, but away from it, and one mallet on the edge of the bar. That way you can still roll on the bar and you don't have to worry about the interval being really close. You can have a little bit of leverage to play the independent roll. Now this piece can be a little bit tricky to learn. So here's how I learned it and here's some practice suggestions that will hopefully help you. It came in three parts. The first part is I learned the entire piece without playing a single roll. And what I did was I substituted the independent rolls for dead strokes. So the first phrase of, the, phrase of this piece is going to sound like this. Once again, replacing the independent rolls with dead strokes that you keep on the bar for the duration of the note value. I learned the entire piece like that. That way I knew exactly where my hands needed to go. I learned the notes. And I also practiced not having the independent roll hand move along with this one. One of the things that we can run into with independent rolls is as the, the hand that's not playing the roll moves around, it can tend to pull the other hand with it and it causes you to move off of the note that you're rolling on. So keeping that in mind, you would just play the entire piece like that really focusing on keeping the dead stroke on the notes that they're supposed to be on while the other hand moves around. Now the second part of this is the working on the independent rolls. I took away the hand that wasn't playing the independent rolls and I simply practiced the rolls as they would be played minus the accompaniment part. So once again in that beginning part, And I went through the entire piece in both hands, practicing it like that. Now, the final part was actually putting it all together. Now, this isn't going to guarantee that it's just going together perfectly and it's going to go together seamlessly, but you have some muscle memory, not letting the accompaniment hand drag the independent roll hand along with it, and you've also built up some strength in your hands with the independent roll so that you won't kind of lose the momentum that you have halfway through the piece. Once again, it's not going to go together perfectly, but it's going to get you a lot of muscle memory in the bank in order to help it get together more quickly. So after you do both of those different parts, then you start playing the entire thing as it would be in the music. to decide what you want to do musically is by once again taking the independent rolls out and doing something that's a little bit more comfortable, just playing that single line at the very beginning with two mallets. That way you don't have to worry about the technique or the fatigue that might be involved. You can simply focus on what you want to do musically.
Now, after you decide what you want to do musically with that, try to imitate that as best you can with the independent role. Now, some of the harder parts with the independent roles are the louder ones, especially at those, uh, at those smaller intervals. There's just not quite enough torque sometimes to go get as loud as you want to do. What you want to avoid is by simply tensing up and playing faster on the independent rolls. That's not really going to get you a whole lot more dynamics. What you want to think of is more velocity into the bar, maybe a little bit more stick height to go along with it. So once again, try to avoid simply playing faster when you want to play louder. It's more about, vol volume is more about the velocity going into the bar rather than how many roll strokes you play within the, within the roll. Another good thing to do, especially at the beginning, is to plan out which mallet you're going to start the rolls off with. You want to have a nice solid beginning to each one of these rolls other, instead of you know, maybe sneaking into them. So in the beginning, I tend to want to start with the inside mallets because that's honestly just where I'm a little bit more comfortable. And starting with the outside mallet, I'm a little afraid that I'm going to miss it and play a wrong note or something like that. So whatever you decide to do, it's your choice. You're the one playing the piece. Just make sure that you make a conscious decision on which mallet you're going to start with. It could be both mallets, um, such as the, the beginning of the B section. Or you could start with the inside mallet or the outside mallet. Whichever one you choose is okay, just make sure that you make the choice. I want to say a big thank you to Balgender for writing this piece for me. Uh, my shoulders still hurt a little bit from all the weird body contortions, but that's okay. I've really enjoyed working on it. It's definitely made my independent roles much, much better, and I hope that it will make yours much, much better. Um, so thank you so much, Balgender, and I hope that these tips will help you get going with Balgender's intervals and angles. <laughs>